Hi, welcome back to English Kaapi Omnia. Now, the most difficult part in voice change, especially from active to passive, is identifying an object in a lengthy predicate. Okay? Especially when we have adjective phrases or adverb phrases almost similar. So, how to find out the object in a sentence or in the predicate segment correctly whenever there are numerous words or units in a sentence and that's the topic in this video so we have got five sentences over here and all the sentences are having transitive verbs that means verb with objects so the verbs are saw helped thanked kept and nominated that means after these verbs we will be getting the object now the most important question that should come to our mind is whether or not the remaining parts of the sentences are the objects in all the five cases now let's consider all the five examples one by one example number one i saw a stranger with a bag so after the verb saw we are getting two units here a stranger and with a bag so should the two units be kept together or they should be kept separated now in order to find that answer straight away we can apply this simple rule and that is let's imagine this part is absent so i saw a stranger it makes sense so the stranger could be the object now let's imagine a stranger is absent here i saw with a bag in that case we realize that it is not making any sense because we can't see with a bag so here we are getting a valid independent unit a stranger but with a bag is not an independent unit with the verb so this dependent unit should remain attached to this independent unit and therefore this is the complete object in this sentence that means the two phrases together are the object which should be used as the subject in case of the passive voice. Therefore, the passive sentence will be a stranger with a bag was seen by me. So we must not keep the phrase with a bag separated because it is functioning as an adjective phrase. And we know that an adjective phrase can qualify a noun or noun phrase. So these two phrases should be combined as a nice match. Then look at the second example. I helped a stranger with a bag. Here as well, we are getting two units. A stranger is a noun phrase and with a bag, another phrase. So let's apply the same rule as we applied in case of example number one. So let's imagine with a bag is absent. So I helped a stranger is meaningful, making sense. Then I helped with a bag is also making sense because in this case, with a bag is functioning as adverb phrase. That means both the phrases, the noun phrase and the adverb phrase, both are here making independent sense. So both are valid and independent. So we must not put them or keep them together. Rather, they should be kept separated. And the logic is this, that an adverb phrase cannot qualify a noun or a noun phrase and therefore they should not be put together so only the noun phrase a stranger is the object in this sentence so you see the passive verse will be a stranger which was the object now becoming the subject was helped with a bag by me so with a bag is getting separated then example number three i thanked the man waiting for me so here as well after the verb a transitive verb thanked we are getting two units, the man, a noun phrase, waiting for me is an adjective phrase. So should we put them together or should we keep them separated? Let's apply the rule. So I thank the man making sense. That means the man is an independent unit. Then I thanked waiting for me is not making any sense. That means waiting for me here is not an independent unit. Therefore, we have to keep the independent and the dependent units together. Like in case of the first example. 
So in example number three, the noun phrase and the adjective phrase together will be the object. And in the passive voice, the whole object should come first as subject. The man waiting for me was thanked by me. Then let's consider the next example. As usual, after that transitive verb kept, we are getting two units. The man, a noun phrase, and waiting for me is an adjective phrase. So should they be kept together or separated? So let's apply the same rule. I kept the man. Doesn't making really a good sense, complete sense, but is making some sense. Therefore, the man is an independent unit. But then I kept waiting for me is also making some sense, not a complete sense though. So waiting for me is also an independent unit here. And therefore, two independent units should not be kept together. They should be kept separated. Therefore, the object in this sentence is the noun phrase itself, the man. Now, the passive voice will be the man object was kept waiting for me by me. Then finally, the fifth example, we nominated the man precedent is slightly different. So as usual, after the transitive verb dominated, we are getting two units, the man noun phrase and then a noun precedent. So let's try to apply the same rule over here as well. We nominated the man making sense. That means the noun phrase is already independent one. And then we nominated precedent is also making sense. And therefore, precedent is also an independent unit. And as usual, like before, we should not put them together. We should keep them separated. So the noun phrase, the man is an object over here. But the question remains, if the word precedent or the noun precedent is the second object in this sentence or not. But here, precedent is what is called factitive object and therefore it should be treated differently. So you see the passive verse will be the man was nominated precedent by us. The man is here the subject. Now in summary, remember this rule that whenever we get multiple units after the transitive verbs, then we have to try each unit with the verbs. Then if a particular unit makes sense with the given verb in that sentence, then that particular unit will be an independent unit, which should not be taken together with the main object or the noun or noun phrase. As in example number five, four and two, we see that the word precedent waiting for me this unit and with a bag, this unit, they are independent and therefore they are not being taken together with the noun phrases, the man, the man and a stranger in these three examples. But whenever we get dependent units like in example number three and one waiting for me and with a bag, they should be kept together with independent units and those two units together should be treated as the object in the whole sentence. So apply this rule whenever you have to find out the object accurately in a lengthier sentence, especially whenever the predicate is a lengthier one. Now that's it about this video today. My next video will be on voice change as well and with regard to object because in the next video I'll be discussing how to apply the rule of omission. You see, whenever we get a sentence like this, there is a particular rule applying which we'll be able to see how a particular word cannot be an object at all. And that will make things easier for us as to how to find out object in a given sentence more accurately and rather easily. See you soon in the next video. Serve your motherland.